What's going on everyone, it's Twist here, welcome back to another video. So today, it's a day for another game review. I should do game review, like PewDiePie does it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna review another game, this time it's again a Master's Rank, but last time it was like, I think the guy reached Master's Rank right at the end of the game, this time it's said, as you can see, a casual rank of Master Special Ops. So we're moving up. Uh, it's even a more professional game, I guess. I will review some of the lower level games like I did at first, which was like gold rank, but for now, I'm going to focus on more of the higher rank since that's what you guys asked for. Um, again, if you enjoy this type of content, leave a like, uh, subscribe somewhere down there, join my Discord and my Trovo. Um, I'll be live on Trovo soon. That's that's what I always say, but you know, you got you got to follow there. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna move over to, to the game and see what he did right, see what he did wrong, and try to help him improve. Alright, so the game that I'm gonna be reviewing is on Canals. Canals is personally my favorite map of all time, so it's gonna be interesting for me to watch as well. And uh, yeah, should be a good game. We can see that he's using headphones, which is good. I mean, I don't use them that much, but you still, you know, using headphones always gives you an advantage. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Looks like on the pistol they're gonna go for the A stack. He bought Kevlar, which is good on the CD side, since the Kevlar helps when you have to fight off multiple opponents. And they're all just pushing here. Alright, and it looks like it actually worked out. He's just gonna wait in the corner. I mean, not a bad decision, but it's like like three of these guys here in elbow, they're not doing anything, so it would be best if you rotated back to like main or something. Um, looks like he is gonna stay here. And go for the peak. In this situation, you shouldn't really peak because the opponents already know that there's like, you know, that the collision has pushed up uh, elbow. So like if he's peaking here, he doesn't even have a long range weapon. He kind of just uh, makes him makes himself vulnerable and, you know, it's going to be hard for him to do anything here. Uh, but he tries to get a kill. They got the bomb. All right. And they're rotating back. His crosshair placement is good. From what I see, he is actually aiming at heads, which wasn't the case in some of my other game reviews. He gets one. Gets two. Nice nice frag there. And the last one is there as well. Alright, pretty clean pistol round. I mean, not much that I can say other than maybe you shouldn't peek, um, you know, uh, angles that you know that the opponents expect you from, especially if you don't have a long range weapon. Okay, here this is like, you should be sure where you're going, like he's going gay and then he's like, oh no, I'm not going gay anymore. I mean, it's not a big issue, but you should always kind of pick the position that you're going to play and stick to it. Looks like he's just lagging a little bit. And he's going to hold CT, try to spray him down with the SA-58. Um, yeah, not a, not a bad decision, it's better if he pushes up as he's doing now. And this just looks like a cleanup round. Yeah, basically... Didn't even get the kill, that's fine. And now he doesn't, he stays with his SA-58, which, I mean, he has 4.4k, so it would make sense if he just, like, bought an AUG here. Uh, but alright, let's see how it works with SA-58. He is kind of rubber banding. Um, yeah, holding this angle with SA-58 is not really good, because SA-58 is 5 spray weapon, and he's probably not gonna get the frag with uh, 1 spray, so he's, like, he'll have to get 2 sprays, which is quite hard, especially on long range, so... Again, okay, he's gonna play the kind of rotation player, just holding down CT and then rotating wherever the action is. And he's just moving towards to that elbow area. Mm, SA server, yeah, that seems like the case. Alright, well, th there isn't really much for me to say as they're, like, not losing. You know, as long as this team is winning, it's kind of harder to make uh, bad decisions. Right here, running with the knife may be a bit extreme, but, I mean, it's fine. Alright, in this situation, like, um, it's a 2v3, one of his teammates went down there, he should just hold an angle, he just, like, he should just, like, hold this T-bridge area, or something like that. Um, pushing up isn't really necessary, because when you push, they're just basically camping and waiting for them to peek. That's a nice frag, but, yeah, again, it's not really necessary. Now it's only one, uh, he knows the opponent will probably go B, and he actually tries to get him. A nice frag there. Yeah, good play by him. So far, so good. Okay, now he has an AK, and he has 7.4k. See, this is what I'm saying, like, sometimes it's just better to buy the better weapon, especially if you have a lot of cash. It's A. So let's see what he does. In this situation, it would be better to just stay back here. Yep, as he's doing. Nading it. Trying to wallbang it. I mean, this is good. So this is, like, by far the best game that I've watched on game review. At least from these rounds, like, just decision-wise. 
Um, now it's a 3v5, so again, he should like check, like let's look let's look at the minimap, right? Like in this situation, they have one AFK and like nobody is really checking mid, like none of his teammates are checking mid. So it would be best if he just stayed kind of on the mid area. And even though it's a 3v5, just make sure that, you know, the enemies are not like going through mid. Because on A, there's already two guys on A and I mean, it's quite, quite uh, well on lockdown. So yeah, it's better if he goes back here and just holds the CT area. One of his teammates is on B. Yeah, the best decision would be to go underpass. Not really peak, like he can just hold this. Um, he should just stay CT. He knows that one is square and he goes down. Yeah, it's probably because like he peaked way too much here. Um, I mean, he also missed his shots, but he, he peaked way too much. It would have been better if he just like held an angle and that would, uh, he would probably get, get a frag easier. All right, uh, so we bought an AUG. He's jumping there. What you can do is you can jump on this bush right here, right down here. You can jump on it and then you can like see over it and you don't even have to jump. You can just see over it and like spam over the car. So jumping on the bush here uh, would be a bit easier because when he spots a player, yeah, he has to wall bang him. But if he jumps on the bush, it's a very hard spot to hit if you're peeking from square and it's just a, a strong position. Um, yeah, so far, so good. I mean, they have one AFK, which is not really great. Yeah, he shouldn't like in this situation you should definitely not re-peek because he already spotted one the enemies know that he's ct and there's probably going to be another dude since they're crossing over to the other side there's going to be another dude checking for him so like peeking here is not really the best option there isn't a dude checking it but still i mean in this situation he should just rotate over to b because it looks like they are the opponents are going towards b and like staying ct doesn't really help uh, much since you know as we saw there's not really any players there so not really peek here, just kind of hold B, be ready that if someone pushes, he can get the frag as he did. And uh, they're AFK connected back, which is good. And now they're going towards A, so he should just run towards A uh, if he can. But yeah, it's, it's hard to decide where they're going. Looks like they're just going for split pushes. Here in this situation, when it's a 1v2, you should always commit to a site. Because if he stays CT, if the enemies go A or B, they're going to plant, right? But if he just like kind of gambles it and, and stacks one site, then at least if the enemies go to that site, then he can like do something. And he just goes down, which is unlucky. But yeah, in 1v2 situations, when you're on collision side, you should always commit to one of the sites. You should, you should gamble it. So then at least, you know, if, if the enemies go to that site, you don't have to like, it's not like you have to retake both sites. It's only you have to retake one site if you're unlucky. Kind of with your judgment. Um, kind of unlucky, I guess, positioning there. He just let him pass. And again, he's pushing, like, he should... This is a very hard, like, there's so many angles. He could peek from square, he could peek from up here, as he did. He could peek from cafe, since he already went into cafe. Like, it's not smart to push up here. It's smarter to kind of decide whether or not the enemies are going to go A or B, and then commit to that side. Because this guy's playing as the rotation player, and, like... Mm, you should always like go more to sites as a rotation player, not really just like, you know, stay in one spot when it's not on site. He's gonna go play B. Uh, on B, you you kind of have to be more aggressive than on A, because it gives you a lot of info if you're aggressive on B. Not really sure, yeah, peaking this with an AUG isn't really smart, because normally uh, if the enemies, if the breach side has a, a Euratio or a sniper, they will hold like either this angle right here on the side or in the middle or somewhere. And like when you peek with AUG, you're basically peeking a, a Euratio on long range and you have to like find the Euratio first. So like peeking this area is very risky, especially if you don't have a sniper rifle. Um, if he has utility, he should really throw it now. Looks like he's just gonna wait here. And again, like... Okay, he could have just held this angle. Like, I see a lot of, when I do these game reviews, I see a lot of people just kind of being overactive and like just, like he, there's no reason why you should peek it here. Like, because he was kind of peeking and now he has to adjust his crosshair again, that's why he died. It would be better if you just like play more campy. As much as I dislike camping, like that's just what you have to do on coalition side. Plays B again. This time he's not peeking. But again, like, okay. He has Deagle, right? Deagle is good. Deagle can also get frags in long range, but it's easier to get frags in, in kind of medium to short range with Deagle, just kind of surprise someone. So there's not really any reason why he should peek now. If he had an AR, he could peek like B-Long, just check for info. But like right here, um, he's very exposed from B-Long. If someone peeks from B-Long here, uh, he just gets, you know, shot in the back pretty much. So it's better to just camp, especially if you have like, if you're on eco. Uh, if you can't, if you don't push up immediately, then just camp. 
And he's holding an angle, which is good. Looks like there's one B-long as well, but they're probably going to go towards A. And yeah, right, he's rotating towards A. I mean, here he should just go for the frags. It's going to be very hard to do anything more than get at least like one frag and then die. So yeah, he should wait for his teammate. Again, we checked radar, we see that the teammate is moving up with him as well. And he should just go for the jumping here, kind of like there. What's the point of slow walking here? If you jump and you just give away like this, if the enemies are sounding, they already hear that you jumped, you know, so not really choose either you slow walk and don't make any noise or you kind of um, you just kind of, you know, make all the noise you can and just kind of um, depend that you're going to kill him with your aim. They push bridge every time, just keep that in mind. All right. Now he has an AUG. Now it would actually make sense if he like pushed up Belong and just kind of jiggle peeked it to check for info. Because if there's nobody Belong, that really gives a lot of info for, uh, w you know, where it's possible for the enemies to be. Since they're not Belong, it's probably either there's someone square, but most likely they're just tunnels and towards the side of things. Um, Alright, this is good. He rotated back, but we already see that one is pushing up Catwalk. His teammate got it. Now, 17 bullets. I mean, he can reload, but it's not that necessary. Yeah, there's, there's like, no reason to peek this. Like, it's a 2v4, right? It's a 2v4, and, like, it doesn't really have the best angle. Like, here we can see he's trying to wall bank. He doesn't really have the best angle to get a frag. So, it, I mean, he can peek, but it doesn't really um, give him much if he does. Alright, and his team cleans it up. Okay, so his teammate, looks like his teammate is always holding, like, this kind of cross area here yeah he has an sf58 so this guy should like at least go cafe or play aggressive on belong just uh, not even aggressive just jiggle peeking and play for info because like holding it like this i mean it, it sure it works but it just doesn't give it give as much info as if he was to peek yeah like jiggle peeking this would be smart as he's doing and just moving on to and now you see how much you see how much info this gives if you peek belong there's nobody there like this part of the map is pretty much cut off now and you only like your if your team watches radar then they know that you know the enemies will have to be either tunnels or t bridge or a main where they uh, actually are um it would have been better in this situation to go uh, to their spawn because when he goes here he will have to like he will go A main, right? And you can go A main from B site as well, even if you're not pushed up B long. So it kind of wastes the B long push if, um, you know, if you just go to the same spot where he could have went if you didn't push up. All right. Um, it, sh it would be good if he, like, pushed up once. Um, I mean, sure, he got the frag, which is nice. Probably nading it now would make a bit more sense. There's one cafe. All right, he got the frag, but again, it's like, like why not why not just hold like why not just hold this angle right here he has reloaded just like hold this angle that's it like when he uh, walks up and like he just has to flick it's easier to just uh, kind of camp it out and hold an angle he did get two frags which is nice but still okay so now they're double nading it um you should probably wait like a bit a few more seconds before you nade it because enemies normally expect you to kind of pre-nade it so they just wait you know, they just wait a couple of seconds for the nades to land. So it's kind of wasting a nade. Um, it's better to type in the team chat, like, you know, just wait, let, let's wait, let's wait five seconds and then nade. And that actually gives you more frags normally, or at least more damage. All right, so in this situation, he shouldn't really push uh, because it's like there, there's already info on the minimap that they're towards the spawn area. So they're most likely going to be belong as well. And yeah, his teammate did exactly that. He pushed and uh, went down. Now he's mad. Assist, okay, so they did get some damage with the nades. Okay, you got a frag, but again, like, there's not really... It's good to peek at the start of the round, because then you kind of get the info. Or at least it, it gives, like, more uh, info for the team, yeah? Like, if you peek now, like, the team already pretty much knows where the enemies are. It's not as much about, like, knowing where they are, and more about, like, you know, whether or not you can kill them in this situation. So, again, he can just, like, hold this angle. His teammate even called out tons, so he can just, like, hold it. And, uh... Okay, nice frag that his opponent didn't react. But, like, it's it's easier to just hold... In a lot of uh, scenarios, especially on the collision side, it's just easier and you're gonna get more frags if you play more campy. And you don't have to, like, camp all the time, but... You know, you, they just don't make kind of... Um, just don't make peaks where they're not needed, is what I guess I'm trying to say. 
CD maybe. Like this is not a good angle to hold it from. If he is CT then sure, but if there's a chance that he's like main or elbow, then it's like... Uh, okay, he got fragged. But like he's really exposed. Like you should only hold angles like this where you're pretty much exposed from both elbow and main if you're sure the guy is there. If you're not sure that the guy's there, you shouldn't do it. Alright, so it looks like they are going for, I guess, B. Um, they didn't push up immediately, which is kind of bad, because normally on canals, on the collision side, the enemies just kind of stack push. So, like, by this time, they have already pretty much pushed out elbow or, or main, if they're doing it, on A site. So now they just know that it's B. And, you know, those um, extra seconds, those couple, one or two extra seconds really mean a lot. Just keep trying to push up. Um, in this situation, it would be best to like, kind of go cafe and worry about that, kind of cutting out rotation, because there's one guy on site, and he can kind of depend on his teammates to do it. And yeah, it's like, sure, not a bad idea to push there, but it's better to just kind of um, barricade the site and just make sure all corners of the site are um, being held. Cafe, okay, and okay. Alright, so what did he buy? Let's see. What a deagle, which is not a bad decision, because it's only $700, and next round he'll be able to buy. Um, okay, he's the lurker. He's the lurker here, right? So as the lurker, your job is pretty much to um, stay stay alive as long as possible and kind of catch enemies off guard. You know, let's say after 30 seconds, there would be someone crossing uh, mid-bridge, and he would pr pretty much catch him off guard. So it's not really smart to peek first as the lurker, because if you get the frag, sure, you get the frag, but... Um, otherwise you just go down and there's no point of you lurking. So if you're not helping your team on the breach side, it's always better to kind of just wait it out and try to get frags later in the game. And that also kind of opens up possibilities for your team to rotate. Like if he stayed on square and camped it out and like let's say two of his teammates died on A, but he got one frag on B, then his team can rotate on B. Because now they have like no idea if B is open, if there's someone in the corner there um, or something like that. So yeah, as the lurker, you kind of have to bait your team, which is, I mean, it is what it is. If you play as lurker, you have to like more focus on getting the frags and, and just camping it out rather than just like playing with your team. Fast push A main. All right, let's see this. Okay, so he's watching cross, helping his teammates, which is good. Um, right, right before here, as they pushed up, we can see that all three of them like, look, all three of them are checking the left side here. So if you see that, you know, there's two two of your um, teammates in front of you and they're not checking, like, one angle, like, he should be checking this cubby area. Because if the guy from cubby, if there's a guy cubby and he peeks, he'll pretty much have, like, free spray on three of these guys. Gets flashed, probably a team flash, which is fine. They clear out the site, which is nice. Okay, here, he should just stay on site. There's no need to push up. It's a 3v3. If it was a 1v2, if it was a 1v3 or 2v3, where you kind of have to get fragged to get a bigger chance, then yes, but if it's a 3v3, there's no need to, like, kind of peek and push up. So, yeah, he's doing exactly that, which is good. Like, there's no reason to peek this. Um, his teammate got it, and he gets the frag as well. Last one is CT. And he can, like... He doesn't... Okay, good frag. In this situation, you should just run away. You should just run away. You know the guy is CT. You should just go main or elbow and just play time as much as possible. Because, like, the, the objective of the coalition player here is to take out both players because he can't really defuse the bomb if, you know, one of the players are alive. I mean, he can, but un unless he ninja defuses, it's impossible. So, like, in this situation, even though he got the frag... Uh, which is nice, it would be better if he just like ran away and played for time, like, especially when the bomb is planted on coalition side, it's so much better to play on time and just play for the objective, play for the bomb to explode, rather than just go for the kills. Because, you know, getting the frags won't win you the round. I mean, it will, but it's just better to play it safe. Um, he's jiggle picking it, which is good. Alright, so here... Um, one of his teammates is lurking, one is holding tunnels, so it would be best for this guy to go with the bomb, since he could also go elbow, but if the bomb goes down and there's nobody else there, um, then it's kind of just there. So he should, he should go with the bomb, which he's doing. Um, he should push on site here, because it's, uh, like, it's pretty easy for a coalition player to take down two, two, um, of the breach players, especially if, like, he's holding a good angle. 
and yeah see that what this is what happened see like one of the guys went down now the bomb is kind of stuck he has to engage in a 1v1 and if he loses it he loses the bomb so like the push just stopped here like he should have went main and then they would have actually been able to go on site now they have to rotate away because yeah this is not really good they don't have the bomb as well so like it's not really smart to push if you don't have the bomb to push aside if you don't have the bomb yeah this is just i mean okay they get they get the plant but it would have been better if uh if they push together or didn't push at all not like one by one like dying one by one is is really not good you should always try to refrag your teammates both on breach and collision side and critical ops all right, there's no need for him to peek uh, square before his teammates have not pushed up uh, belong, especially if he's alone. Like in this situation, like sure he can go here, but he needs to play with the team more because like his teammates, are, if he goes down here, there is no chance he's getting refragged. It's just like it turns from a 4v5 and a 3v5. It's better at least if one of his teammates are going with him or if he's going with his teammates because then it's like a frag for frag, you know, it's, it's eye for an eye, which is not happening here. And he's stuck. He should really jump down to cafe here because he's gonna get repeaked from main. He can be shot from CT or uh, cross as well. So the best decision would be to jump down. Um, yeah, there was guy CT. He got kind of saved. And oh, nice. They actually get two frags. Again, there's like no need to repeak main. They could just go with the bomb. We see the bomb's already pushed up. The, both of these guys could just go with the bomb and push on site. Like three, three of them push on site. Because the bomb, like, if the bomb goes down here, the enemies have the bomb, and you have to, like, repeat the same enemy. So, it's better to always kind of follow the bomb if the bomb is pushing up. Mm, okay, so he should go with the bomb again, because if he went on site now, um, then it's easier for the guy to plant. Now there's a chance that uh, the guy plants and gets taken down. At least it gets the gets plant down. Here they should play on crossfires, so they should play it in a way where um, they're pretty much both holding the same angle, and if one of them goes down, the other one can immediately refrag. Uh, but it looks like the one is going to watch cafe, and the other one is just going to stay CT. Um, I predict someone to go belong and cafe. Yep. Okay, and he gets. See, this is what I was saying. If this guy who is CT was holding like somewhere here, um, if when this guy goes down. Like, right at this moment, when this guy peeks, like, even if if um, the guy that I'm spectating goes down, his teammate can refrag him. So that's why it's good to kind of hold, um, what is it called, like, cross angles, or just angles where, you know, you refrag angles pretty much. Okay, but they get drowned, which is good. Ooh, nice, I always like when I see ratio in these. Man's peeking one by one in a 1v2. Um, okay, so it's not bad to jiggle peek there, but... Here, there is, like, one of these guys should be going with the team. There's not really any need for two lurkers. So, unless you have, like, voice call enabled and you have, like, really good communication, there's no need for two lurkers. So, like, I would suggest this, the guy that's sniping, like this dude, to play with the sniper. And this Sir Chico dude can, can um, be the lurker. Because the guy with the sniper, like, he can really help his team with it. Especially like holding long range angles, but here it's like, like even if these guys take open sight, okay, let's say both of these guys now they empty up B side, B side is open. That still doesn't change the fact that the bomb is down on the other side of the map, and all that enemies have to do to win is to just hold down the bomb. So, like, if you see that someone is lurking, just go with the team. Like, I also like to lurk, but it's better to, it's better if there's only one lurker. And if both of these guys go down, then it's just, you know, two players lost, so. Yeah, it's always better. Like, look, he's playing with Eurasio and he's checking, like, such tight angles. Like, checking Cafe with Eurasio is, like, nightmare fuel. And, you know, he's doing it, so... Okay, misses his shot, which is fine. Oh, he actually didn't miss. He just slid him to five. But see, now, like, they're both lurking and now they have to take, take the bomb, so... It's like, you know... It would have been better if this dude or the other dude was going with the team. Um... He's going quick, which is good. This is good. The bomb is down. They're both going to go from different angles, which is good because if you go from the same angle, then it's just easier for the coalition player to spray both of them down with, like, you know, not even flicking. Um, yeah, Chico, wait, Nether. That's a good strategy. They both need to push up at the same time. Um, all right, here. Um, I guess the guy's elbow, and, like, he should wait a little bit more for this main dude. Um, never mind. He's not elbow. 
And then he gets the frag, which is nice. Alright, that was actually a good play. Alright, so he has the bomb, he drops the bomb, and he's gonna peek square with the U ratio. He always does the jiggle peek. Um, there, yeah, there's no need to re-peek this. Like, you get the info, like he gets the info. Okay, now he's like, okay, I will kill this dude. But, like, in this situation, it would be better for him to just, like, wait a little bit, um, because he knows the dude's position, and then just, like, re-peek. Uh, because right here, you know, the opponent also spotted him, so he's just gonna have his crosshair, like, locked on him, and that's what happens. He peeks it, and, you know, he's not, he's not quite sure where the dude is, but the dude knows that he will peek, like, the dude he saw on radar, he could be, like, here, he could be a bit to the right, he could be maybe even under. Like, there's a lot of spots where the dude is, since he has already peeked. But for this dude, he has to peek, so, like, it's easier for the opponent to just hold, like, the only angle he'll peek from. And yeah, he goes down. Um, alright, and then we see... They pretty much win the game, which is nice. Okay, so, this game was good. One thing I'll have to say is that this dude has to play with his team more uh, on the breach side. He should always, like, check more um, what his team is doing. And if there's one guy lurking, you should not be the... Like, you, there should never be a situation where there's true lurkers. Unless you have, like, really good voice call communication and all of that. Um, yeah, so play more with his team on the breach side. And on the collision side, I'd say just... Again, this is my last video, just hold angles more, just kind of stay in the same spot more. And when you play as the rotation player, which is basically the guy that doesn't play A or B, that just kind of, you know, holds mid or whatever, um, you should, like, uh, commit to... You should commit to sites uh, quicker, like you should go one side, hold an angle for a while, and then rotate on to the other side, because holding mid, at least on canals, it, I mean, it does give you an advantage, but it's not really good to push it, and this dude was like pushing mid a lot of the times. Alright guys, so that about concludes it for today, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed, if you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see y'all next time, bye!